starting with a rustic Italian ciabatta bread. Oh, so light and airy. This starter is called a biga. And I begin with a cup of lukewarm water. I'll add just a pinch of yeast. It only takes a pinch to get the starter activated. What I need is 150 grams of whole wheat flour. And I just add this directly to my water. I also like weighing because it's tidier. You just measure right into the bowl. And I also need 150 grams of bread flour. Here we go. You want to stir all the ingredients by hand. You're not making bread at this point. You're just making the starter. Once everything's evenly blended, you don't have to do more than that. I'll cover the bowl with plastic. And then this gets set aside for 12 to 18 hours on the counter. You don't need to refrigerate it. And look how it transforms. After half a day, it really bubbles up, comes to life. So it's really kind of soft and spongy. So now that the biga has had time to ferment, I'm ready to make the ciabatta bread dough itself. I need 180 grams of this biga, so not all of it. And now to the biga, I want to add two and a third cup of water, lukewarm. Now it's time for the next round of ingredients including yeast. Now, ciabatta bread is known for having big, airy holes within it. So you really ramp it up by adding more yeast, five grams. And now I'll add 485 grams of bread flour so it holds in all those airy bubbles that the yeast produces. And lastly, I need 12 and a half grams of salt. That's what I love about good homemade bread. It's about the simplicity of the ingredients. Flour, yeast, water, salt, and that's it. Now, you'll see here, look at how sloppy and stretchy this dough is. This is exactly what you want. You might be tempted to add more flour. Please resist. Now, I like to switch to a bowl scraper. That way, I can really feel the dough as I basically slap it around the bowl. And as you work it, you'll feel it get stretchy. There we go, that's the elasticity, I mean. You can see it as it pulls away from the side of the bowl. And that's all it needs. There you go, you cover the bowl with plastic wrap. And what a good homemade bread needs is time. Two hours on the kitchen counter. It'll more than double in size. And here is the ciabatta dough after two hours. And see how you have this beautiful dome? That's the CO2 that the yeast has produced and let off as the bread ferments. Look at that jiggly texture. That's that slow fermentation. And then you want a generous coating of flour. And then I'll switch to a flat-sided bench scraper and cut the dough in half. You're trying to achieve sort of a long rectangle. And then you just lift it onto your tray, flattening it out into that rectangle shape. But don't expect it to look perfect. It is a country bread, and it's meant to look rustic and homemade. Now, since I've moved the dough around, I've deflated it a little bit. It needs about 30 minutes more to come back to life. After 30 minutes, you can see how they've expanded out again and relaxed. Just so beautifully rustic. I can't wait to put them in the oven. It takes a hot oven, 425 degrees. And I give these 20 minutes, then I turn the oven off and I let them sit in the oven for another 10 minutes. I just love the look of this bread. It is so rustic and authentic, and you made it by hand. It's amazing. Oh, then look at the result. You can see those big, airy holes. 
A ciabatta bread like this is best just dunked in a little olive oil. Something to be proud of. Mmm, mmm. When you bite into it and it's almost a little bit stretchy, you know you have a good rustic country bread. Mmm.